What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for May 29th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Wednesday edition. Happy Hump Day, as we always say around here. Let's get right into the episode. And as always, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, based on the fact that the Celtics are now in the NBA Finals, will you watch? And then 80% of you said no. I don't know if that was just sort of caught up in the moment because of the Celtics, still bitter about the Sixers, if you're like me, or what. But I honestly, at this point, I have zero interest in any of the teams. I don't know. I'm more to get through the finals, get me to the draft, get me toward free agency, and all that other good stuff. Speaking of free agency, lots and lots of Sixers rumors going on. Uh, the contradicting rumors. So apparently Bronny James will only work out for the Lakers and the Suns, which would lead people to believe that those are the only two teams that LeBron would be interested in playing for. Well, the problem is the Suns don't have any money. Not sure if the Lakers are going to want him back or not. But now the Sixers are linked towards signing LeBron James. It's a whole convoluted mess. Uh, and then throw in the fact that there was also an article going around that the Sixers are prepared to offer Jimmy Butler the max if his contract uh, talks, negotiations, whatever you want to call them, with Miami go down the drain. However, that would mean they'd have to trade. Sixers don't really have anything to trade but draft picks, which ultimately means you'd be mortgaging your future for a run with Jimmy Butler and Joe and... I- I don't know if that interests me or not. To be completely honest with you, uh, Jimmy Butler five years ago when they first didn't let him go or let him go, I would have been all in. But now I, I just I, I don't want him back. I don't want Paul George. I, I, I want to get younger, not older. But those were the two big rumors going around. And then there was an article um that Nick Nurse liked Zach Eddy's game and was very complimentary of him. Problem with him, he's 7'4", and I don't know if we need another 7'4 player. It's almost like they're... And they didn't say the Sixers were interested in drafting him, just that Nick Nurse was a fan of his game. But it's almost like they're taking it back to the 80s instead of... I don't know, it's like the opposite of Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman always seems to be ahead of the curve. And it seems like if that would be the way the Sixers go, it's they're behind the curve. But that's where we stand with the Sixers. And that's why, as the question of the day, 80% of you agree with me. I don't want to watch the finals. I want the finals to be over. I certainly don't want to see Boston win another one. I want to figure out and then get started on the Sixers offseason so we can either be excited to, and then have our hearts ripped out or we can be pissed off and still have our hearts ripped out. But let's just start the process, you know, like no pun intended there, but let's just trust it, start the process, and we know what's going to happen. We already know how next season is going to end, how it's going to play out. Let's just get it started, rip our hearts out, move on, and go about our days. All right, a couple quick housekeeping notes. I've been telling you, calendar is almost June. That means June is the... we're. Summer starts July or July. Summer starts June 21st ish, somewhere around there. We're going to do a summer nickname tournament, the Ultimate Philly Nickname Tournament. 64 nicknames, four regions. You vote. Let me know who has the best nickname in Philly. Teams are in there, players, um, coaches, you name it. I included them all. We're almost done the, the final seedings and everything. We're, we're close. We got a couple conference tournaments to wrap up. But on June 21st, that Friday, we're going to do Selection Friday where I'll unleash the, unleash the brackets. We'll do a whole special. It'll be a separate show for that. Might even do that live if I can figure that out. Hold that thought. Uh, I do have a golf outing that day, though, so I don't know. But there will be Selection Friday where I un- unveil all of the – the nicknames and then you guys have the entire weekend to rip me for my choices before the tournament gets started that monday june 21st until then you know how we always do something special well the the special segment for june 1st through 23rd we're going to go take a trip down philly's 
memory lane and just take a look at some random Phillies. Some of these guys you probably forgot played for the Phillies. Some of these guys you probably just forgot in general. But we're going to have some fun with this. Um, it was very easy to come up with a list. The hard part was finding 23 to narrow it down to. Uh, but we'll have some fun with that. But then the nickname tournament kicks off on June 24th. We'll run till July 25th, I believe. Uh, it'll be two matchups per day. And then the championship will be on July 25th. Might even give that two days just to extend it to see what we can come up with. Uh, but stay tuned for that. Best way to follow and, and be able to get your vote in is to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont at Twitter and TikTok at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Hit me up on Facebook. I get a lot of people when I do these tournaments and, and a lot of polls like this on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Hit the like button. Leave a review. Comment. All that other good stuff gets you into involved with the podcast and it also helps me out and helps the algorithm out and all that other good stuff 267-495-8531 is the back to the future voice and text line leave me a voicemail text message on whatever's on your mind whatever you're thinking whether it's the question of the day got some suggestions for the nickname maybe we can have some lit last minute upsets of the mid-majors to knock some of the big guys out let me know uh, but all of that is your best way to get involved. And the more you're involved, the better it is for us. Uh, and the more I'm able to do some fun things like this. So I'm looking forward to, to this nickname tournament. Uh, so spread the word. Uh, like I said, if you were here last year, you know we did the Lovable Loser. And that was an awesome, fun time. The nickname I'm even more excited about. So spread the word. Let's get this thing started. Information for the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame induction class is and ticket information for the ceremony is in the description. So check that out. And if you have any interest in being a sponsor or would like to donate something from your business for the silent auction, hit me up offline for that as well. All right, everybody, take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. It's a 162 game season. They were playing at a ridiculous pace. Historic pace, so a little three game losing streak. It's not the end of the world, especially because two of the games happened in San Francisco, and they I don't know what it is, and it makes no sense. And I, I don't know if it's the travel or what, but they never play well in San Francisco. And I like, I kind of like in my head remember back in '93 that they didn't play well against the Giants either, especially out in San Francisco. So it's just one of those things. Uh, it, it's a quirk. They swept them here in Philly. They'll, they'll be okay. Um, this afternoon, uh, Christopher Sanchez is on the mound. I mean, and Zach Wheeler was great. I mean, 100% great last night. The offense just couldn't get anything going. Like, you lose one nothing in 10 innings. It's just crazy. Still have a five-game lead. It's the first three-game losing streak since September of last year. It's not the end of the world. It's going to be okay. Um, JT extended his hitting streak to 17 games, which was good. Uh, but they do they do need to salvage this one. If they can salvage this one, salvage this one to go two for four on the trip. Big picture, if we if you remember, I said if they can go three and three, I'd be happy. Two and four, I, I feel like the way they've played, I I will take two and four and then take the day off tomorrow and get ready for the Cardinals this weekend. But it's going to be okay. There's going to be ebbs and flows in the season. Luckily, they've built up a nice little cushion there. So let's just breathe. I know yesterday on the radio, it seemed as though the sky was falling with some fans. It's not the end. It's not chicken little. It's going to be okay. The sky is not falling. But the Sixers, or the Phil Sixers, Phillies are in action this afternoon trying to salvage a game out in San Francisco. And if I haven't told you this a thousand times already, I hate west coast baseball it's stupid and i know people on the west coast are like oh it's great but but no west coast baseball is stupid no it's not stupid the swim trunks at philly goat check them out the censored swim trunks it's pixelated it looks like you're wearing nothing at all men's and women's they got the men's trunks the women's bikini like i said they just do great things out there so go check out philly goat and then get ready for the summer 
get your t-shirts you got the get ready for the london series the founding father uh it's probably a little too late now it's going to be cutting it close to get it for the london series but i'm, I, I'm telling you they keep the, the work for the fourth of july especially that britain blew uh, a 13 colony lead and always a good time to scuff mrs met so get your shirts there they got you covered the the feast mode uh and that and that, they're just going to keep coming out with more shirts so go check it out Use the promo code Jim Montgomery, 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. I have a couple events I got to go to for work today, so I'm going to be traveling around the Southeast PA area. Plan on wearing my fans today. Check out the shoes they got there as well because they're more comfortable, and I have a pair of Hey Dudes, and the the canvas loafers from Philly Goat are way more comfortable than... uh, the Hey Dudes, and you, you can quote me on that. It's not because we have a partnership with them. It's not because I'm trying to sell and peddle things. It's because they're damn comfortable shoes, and Hey Dudes, like these things make Hey Dudes look like walking on cement. Like That's all it is to it. So go check out everything Philly Goat has to offer. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. PhillyGoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10%. All right, a couple Eagles notes. Um, Jason Kelsey was interviewed. And he said he's not going to be biased toward the Cowboys when he he does that, but he still hates the Cowboys. And I still I, I question that because I wonder if ESPN wants him to be biased toward the Cowboys because look at what between Stephen A. Smith and all the guys doing what they do with the Knicks against the Sixers and everything, ESPN wants him to start talking trash on the Cowboys. But he he said the right thing, but he said he still hates the Cowboys. I have to mention this because I've seen it. It's been floating around my social media all week. But the Eagles on their Twitter account listed a uh, or put out a tweet that said, which game do you wish you could rewatch from start to finish? And it got me thinking because I'm like, man, there, there's just so many games. Like I remember between games I've been to in person that I would love to rewatch on TV to see what I missed. Uh, so many Buddy Ryan era games with Randall and everything. And I, I feel like Super Bowl 52 was the obvious choice. I've seen it probably at least 500 times by now, um, start to finish. And uh, at my old house, I would have like probably from February till August or September, every day at work, I'd have it playing in the background. And I would just pause it when I got done work and pick right back up and then just replay it from the beginning again. So that's the obvious answer. The Fog Bowl would be another one. I have that on. I have a digital copy of the Fog Bowl. However, I get too pissed off when I watch it. Even before the fog rolls in, I can't watch the end of it because it just frustrates me to no end. Um, The Snow Bowl was fun to be at. Um, I don't know how much fun it was to watch on TV, but it was an awesome game to be at. Uh, All three of the NFC Championship games were um, games that were fun to be at. I uh, would love to watch again. The Miracle of the Meadowlands, any of the three. But for me, my choice of the game I'd watch from start to finish on TV, and I went down a rabbit hole yesterday when I was planning the podcast and watched a 15-minute condensed version of this game, and it was incredible. Going all the way back to 1989, and that was the Week 2 uh, Eagles-Washington, uh, just a random 1 o'clock game. Uh, Second week of the season, Eagles won that game 42 to 37. They were down 30 to 14 at halftime. They had three turnovers in the first quarter. And then the second half, Randall just kind of took over. Uh, ended up throwing for 447 yards and five touchdowns. They scored two touchdowns in the final two and a half minutes of that game. One was on a touchdown pass, I believe, to Mike Quick, which was a hell of a pass by McNab or uh, Randall. And then Gerald Riggs fumbled. Wes Hopkins picked it up and went like 40 yards, got it inside the five. And then Randall threw uh, the final touchdown pass to Keith Jackson. Keith Jackson had 130 or 126 yards, 12 catches, three touchdowns. But Randall with that 447 yards, um, defense for six turnovers. It was just an amazing game to watch. Come back. Like it just was fun. Um, this is not the official question of the day, but the Super Bowl is not available. What is your favorite Eagles game of all time? That We'll steal this one from the Eagles Twitter account. God only knows they've stolen enough of my money over the years. So 
What is your favorite game that you would love to watch start to finish? The Super Bowl, neither Super Bowl or any of the Super Bowls are not available. What are you watching? Me, that week two game against Washington when Randall led the comeback. Uh, I got chills just watching it. Yes, Like I said, I went down a rabbit hole. Uh, it was Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw who did a ton of Eagles games back then. Uh, but what is your go-to? What game would you love to watch start to finish again? Uh, let me know that as a bonus question of the day. All right, Flyers, there is no Mishkov update today, but the big stories have been trying to figure out what else they're going to do because they have Travis Konecti and Cam York, who both are due for contract extensions. Uh, their contracts are expiring, so it depends on what Danny Briere and Keith Jones want to do, but it is one of those interesting kind of things that we got to keep our eye on. So we'll continue to monitor that as well. Union in action tonight for Wednesday night tilt. They're down at Subaru Park against Toronto. Can they finally score a goal, let alone get a win? Uh, but looking forward to that. So maybe they can score a goal. Maybe, perhaps. All right. Anyway, today we are going to go back to 2010. And on this day in 2010, the Phillies had a 1-0 win over the Mar Marlins down in Florida. The Phillies' only run was scored when Wilson Valdez scored on Chase Utley's line drive to center that was bobbled by the, the center fielder, scored on an error. So there was no it was only it was an unearned run. But the story was Roy Holiday, who pitched a perfect game, the second in team history. Uh, this was his first season with the Phillies. So the Phillies actually won a game that day, 1-0 where there were no earned runs scored in the game. But back to Holiday, he had 11 strikeouts on 115 pitches, got zero run support, which is a preview of things to come possibly, if you remember how that 2011 season ended. But that season, the Phillies rolled through the uh, playoffs, or rolled through the NLDS, I should say. Holiday hit, uh, had a no-hitter against the Reds, so he had a perfect game. And a no-hitter in the same season, his first one with the Phils. And then they lost to the, the Giants in the NLCS, which leads us to today's question of the day. And this is a pivotal year for the Phillies based on what they did the past two years. But if you go back to 07 to 2011, the five straight division titles, uh, the one World Series, two trips to the World Series, obviously 08 they won. But which year was the most disappointing that they didn't win? Was it 07? Was it 10? Was it or 09, 10, or 11? Let me know. 267-495-8531 gets you in. For me, it was this 2010 team because I feel like the next year they ended up with uh, Cliff Lee anyway. So why not just keep Cliff Lee? And I feel like if they didn't get rid of Cliff Lee, they, they would have won it. But which one of those teams that did not win the World Series from the quote-unquote glory days is more disappointing? 07, 09, 10, or 11? I mean, you could certainly make the case for the 09 team that should have beaten the Yankees. Um, you could make the case for the 11 team that... I, I mean, they had the best record in baseball and just got bounced in the first round. But to me, it was this 10 team because I'm like, all right, they regrouped. Holiday came in and they could have had. Like, I, I just don't understand why they didn't do it. But anyway, which team is most disappointing? 267-495-8531. Get you in on the Back to the Future voice and text line. Let me know that as well as your favorite Eagles game that you'd like to rewatch minus the Super Bowls. Going to make you think a little bit and, and do a little bit of work. But on this day, back in 2010, Roy Halladay pitched his perfect game against the Marlins down in Florida. 115 pitches, 11 strikeouts. Unfortunately, they did not do much that season except for lose in the NF or NLCS. I'd also be remiss if I did not mention this. Today, in 1989, Mike Schmidt called it a career in that tearful press conference out in San Diego. He was going to wait till he came back to Philly, and he just... Uh, couldn't do it. So Mike Schmidt, my all-time favorite baseball player. We talked about Randall Cunningham. And you see I'm pointing, if you're watching, I'm pointing to the, the posters I have. We talked about Randall Cunningham, my all-time favorite eagle. 
Um, so it's just a, a day of favorites here on the podcast. But on this day in 2010, Roy Halladay pitched a perfect game. And in 1989, Mike Schmidt called it a career out in San Diego. Finally today, it's a family affair. And today's spotlight is Harry Kovaleski, pitcher for the Phillies from 1907 to 1909. He is a Shemokin PA native. Uh, in his three years with the Phillies, went 11-11 with a 2.09 ERA and 84 strikeouts. Uh, He was okay um, for the Phillies. Their teams were kind of solid. They were middle of the pack. They had, I think, two winning seasons of those three. But the Pirates and Cubs during that time were were the premier teams. But the Phillies were on the brink of winning the pennant in 1915. For his career, Kovaleski had 81 wins, and he has a career... And has, I'll get it out, has a career 2.39 ERA. However, you know where this is going. His younger brother, Stan Kovaleski, was a World Series champion for Cleveland. He did start his career and, and, and uh, started out his career in Philadelphia with the Athletics. But for his career, Stan Kovaleski had 215 wins, a 2.89 ERA. 981 strikeouts. He pitched 224 complete games. So he pitched more complete games than he had wins. Let that sink in for a minute. So that means he pitched about nine ga- or not about, he pitched nine games all the way through and lost them. Um, he is in the Guardians Hall of Fame. He is in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And again, as always seems to be the case a lot of this month, although there was a couple times I guess we had the right brother but in this case, Stan, you were the better brother. And, of course, the Phillies had Harry. And Harry Kovaleski is today's It's a Family Affair spotlight. Pitcher for the Phillies from 1907 to 1909. Not quite as good as his brother Stan, who is in the Guardians Hall of Fame and the Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, but did pitch a year for the Athletics. But that is our spotlight for It's a Family Affair Finally, we're slowly running this down toward June. And I told you we're going to do a little trip down Philly's memory lane before we get into the nickname tournament. On this day, it was Roy Holiday back in 2010, pitching a perfect game against the Marlins. Mike Schmidt also retired on this day in 1989. Let me know, though, which team from the Phillies from 07 to 011 was most disappointing? The 07 team, 09, 10, or 11 for me, it was the 2010 team because they should have won. Um, stuff like, like the old, the 11 team, it happens. The 09 team, it's disappointing that they didn't win. But the 10 team, was a, the, to me, were, were the most underachieving team of the bunch. But let me know your thoughts as well as your favorite Eagles game that you love to watch from start to finish. Super Bowl 52, not included. 267 485 Eight five three. Oh my goodness, two six seven four nine five eight five three one. Jeez, Louise, I'll get it out. That is a Back to the Future voice and text line. Two six seven four nine five eight five three one. Let me know your thoughts on that or anything Philly sports today. It is Hump Day. Hopefully, the Phillies are able to bounce back before that loss and salvage two games of the six they had on this uh, West Coast swing, but. Thank God the West Coast swing is almost over. (sighs) West Coast baseball sucks. Anyway, this has been This Day in Philly Sports History for May May 29th, 2024. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Wednesday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you. 